Jay McGrath and I'm with UiPath. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Raza Malish from People's United Bank. Good morning, Raza. How are you today? Good morning, Jay. I'm good. It's nice to be with you. Thank you for joining us. So why don't you, uh, why don't we start out by having you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about People's United Bank. Uh, thank you. So my name is Raza Malish and I <clears throat> am a RPA program lead for the People's United Bank. Um, so People's United Bank is the second largest uh, bank in New England and it uh, was established in 1842 and we uh, have currently over 60 billion in assets and we are providing uh, commercial retail banking and well management services. We have over 5,500 employees and 400, over 400 retail locations across New England. Um, so that's, that's where we are and awesome. very excited. Um, looking forward to RPA uh, efforts helping the organization uh, move forward. Fantastic. So, you know, it's funny because we're doing this over Zoom because of the COVID uh, shutdown. So let's start out with that. How has the COVID, um, you know, quarantining and everything impacted the work life of the folks who work for People's United Bank? How has it changed things for you? Um, yeah, so this was a big change for the bank because, you know, many of us were office based and used to working like that. So when the crisis hit, um, it was a, a change in, in the organization and we have gone through the challenge, of course, as many others, uh, moving from working in the office environment to the remote environment, but we did it really successfully. I think most of, of the employees are working remotely and it was uh, an intense effort to get that done, but I think we are, we are trying to adjust in, in, um, to the new normal and working, working on it. Good. And so I'm curious, um, you mentioned you're you know, excited about the role RPA can play for People's United. How did you get started with RPA and with UiPath? How did this all begin for you? So last year we had um, a few business units that started looking into um, low code, no code automation technologies to see how they can um, help with uh, delivering some operational efficiencies, additional uh, capabilities, maybe cost savings, and um, a number of platforms were considered. Mm -hmm. And that's how the kind of a proof of concept that was started in the business units happened. Mm -hmm. um, after looking at a few options, uh, it was decided that UAPAD was the most business user friendly platform and we configured it successfully and quickly within the organization to support proof of concept and the decision was uh, made to move forward with the UiPath as the bank's RPA platform and since this was started and sort of the initiative was started within the business user uh, business units naturally the next step was to roll out it as a citizen development approach. Mm -hmm. After that decision was done, uh, the RPA program was established uh, to support and lead the effort across the organization along with a small uh, center of excellence responsible for the governance and RPA expertise development, um, change management and the solution building, supporting the collaborative relationships between our technology organization and our business units um, in the, you know, moving the effort forward. So it's great that you mentioned citizen developer. It's one of the things we pride ourselves in, right? Our tools easy enough to use that a business person who has a little bit of tech savvy in him or her can build their own automations. How did, what sort of was the genesis of moving to Citizen Developer for People's United? What was attractive about this model for you? Um, you know, at the end of the day, who knows their processes and who knows their pain points better than actually business, business units who are working with them, uh, through them uh, on a daily basis. Yeah. And again, like I said, the initiative was started because uh, there's so much potential and uh, we do have, you know, our, in, in our business units, um, um, resources who are technically savvy 
and you know with the the lower requirements of knowing the technology so no code low code um cases and that's why we did proceed with the citizen uh developer model so we could uh, take those tools and provide them to the business units to to drive their own efficiencies and to drive their own capability building yeah. with us helping out along the way. That's fantastic. And um, you know, we mentioned the COVID emergency at the at the top of the discussion, and you know, we noted that your chairman Jack Barnes had mentioned in the Q1 earnings call how People's United used robots to help you process the PPP loans from the SBA you know, in the midst of the, in the midst of the crisis to help small businesses meet, meet payroll. Could you share a little bit of your story with us around how you decided to use robotics for this and, and how that project sort of unfolded for you? Sure. So our first success story with RPA was, you know, as I said, we are very new. We are just starting up. And um, our first success story when uh, happened actually at the beginning of the COVID crisis before even SBA PPP program. Mm -hmm. So we were uh, scheduled to have a conversion of our latest acquisition that was completed at the end of 2019. And as you go through the conversion effort, there's, there's some manual effort that typically is left after. And it typically takes about three to four weeks to go through the some of the manual challenges that we have to to address. <laughs> so at that time, it, you know what happened is we were in the midst of moving from working from the office to the remote working environment. So there were uh, other challenges along, and we started looking on how can RPA help us. Uh, address that, elevate that manual effort that comes after the conversion is completed. Mm -hmm. Like I said, typically it takes three to four weeks uh, for us to finish up uh, with the automation and automating a few processes very quickly within the month. We were able to complete those manual efforts within days after the conversion, which improved our customer service uh, as we had less calls coming through to the call center as a result of that. Mm -hmm. So that was really our first success story and organization really understood what RPA can do for the organization and everybody goes really excited. So then the SBA PPP challenges came along with uh, you know, increase in the volume that everybody was dealing around with. The natural quick um, solution was to look into what RPA can do for the program. We automated three processes to support the efforts and we were very happy to be able to support our customers to enable funding faster. Uh, so that was uh, a, sort of our, our second success story when it comes to the RPA and um, helped organization once again learn uh, what the benefits we can get out of it. So everybody was very, very excited and our customers were very happy as well. So you know, it's great to hear, um, you know, I've been doing this for a few years and the nature of RPA and the UiPath model is each customer can find a slightly different variation of the benefit. And I think people first thought is always cut costs, eliminate jobs and really more often, it's an application like the one you described, right, where you're going to help your customers or you're going to make it so that you can not have that last 15, 20, 30 percent of a process dangling out there and get accomplished. Or in the healthcare space where some of the COVID work, you know, record tracking and testing of folks coming in the door to make sure that they're healthy, um, you know, can be automated so that we can all remain safe and people can get their payroll loans. And that's nice to see that you were able to drive that outcome for your customers, that's great. Um, outside of that sort of unique situation, let's go to a more normal, <laughs> a more normal setup. How do you decide, you know, what opportunities within the bank you do automate and which ones you sort of, you know, let run the way they have been running traditionally? How do you decide what projects to go ahead and move forward with in your COE? So we start with, uh, you know, obviously you're looking at the high volume, repetitive tasks, you know, done by um, multiple uh, employees. And uh, so we are trying to first identify uh, the processes and look at the feasibility of using RPA to automate. You know, not all the processes are suitable, but the ones that we determine that it's feasible to be automated with RPA, the next step, we look at the 
risk assessment and, and trying to see what are considerations that we keep in mind before we decide to automate the process. Anything from information security, from um, you know, complexity and business continuity, any of those key items that you have to think about before you automate the process. And the third uh, step, we look at the benefits assessment. So uh, we finalize on eight categories uh, of the benefits that we consider when we look at the processes uh, as the candidates for the automation. Um, the top three is obviously you know, efficiencies and productivity improvement. We are looking also a lot at the cost avoidance and savings um, and the customer service improvement. So these are definitely the three tops that we look at before we decide to automate the process. The other ones are, you know, improved compliance, something that we can do a lot faster, reduction in errors. And uh, I think another important um, benefit as well, along with those three that I mentioned, is added capability. So the, this is also an, at the top of our list to see what uh, other um, capabilities we can add with RPA that we were not able to do. So for example, if you have a process that we could do only that much because of limited resources, mm -hmm. that adding RPA solution, suddenly you can do 100% of what you would hope so to do, but you don't have resources right now to do. So that's an important one as well. And, and um, you know, you're looking at, at from that perspective of the processes too. That's fantastic. I know we're all constrained resource-wise for sure, right? So it's great that you're able to fill that gap. You know, the last thing I'm curious about, um, Rasa, is what's what's next for Peoples United? So if you fast forward six, 12 months, what do you see in terms of automation and citizen developer? Where do you think you're headed next? Um, so right now, we, as I mentioned, in um, expertise building phase, we are looking at the processes sort of from a low-hanging fruit point of view in order to learn to build the expertise in the organization. And um, as we are moving forward, we are starting already to think about the more advanced automation technologies. We are looking to see how we can integrate automation with other technologies uh, to achieve even greater benefits. And we're also looking to see how we can start working more closely with process improvement and optimization efforts and to see how automation can actually help that, uh, those efforts as well. So it's very exciting, um, you know, what you know, everybody in the organization now believes what RPA can do. So now it's just uh, taking it to the next level and that's what we are working towards um, in the next six to 12 months. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us and your time. And we're grateful to you for being a customer of UiPath. Thank you very much, Russ. It was nice speaking with you. Thank you very much. Wait up.